Hello everybody, this is Tim here with another Boomstick Critique video. Let me just adjust this a little bit here. Actually, this review will be a little bit different than my normal ones because it will actually be for anime. This is my favorite show of all time, hands down, Dragon Ball Z, motherfucker. Yeah, my favorite show, hands down. Uh, I have all the seasons. This video will cover seasons 1 through 3, and similar videos will, of course, cover the rest. So let's get started with season 1. In front of season one here, you got one of the best, most badass characters, Vegeta, who actually starts out as a villain. When Vegeta was first in the show, I didn't think he was going to be a lasting character. I actually figured he would just get killed off and then probably not come back. But he actually lasts throughout the show and has probably the best character arc of the entire show of Dragon Ball Z. He starts out as a villain and slowly becomes a hero as the show goes on. I love that. You flip it on the back here. You got... Goku, Piccolo, Nappa, Vegeta, Gohan, and Goku himself right over there. Now, Season 1 basically starts off, if you don't know about Dragon Ball Z, it's pretty much about like aliens and stuff like that who live on Earth along with Earthlings who they have mastered using energy techniques, you know, to shoot blasts out of their hands, you know. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. But yeah, they can shoot blasts, energy blasts out of their hands and everything. The main character, Goku, is actually an alien from outer space. Now, he's a Saiyan. Now, Saiyans are sent to Earth to uh, uh, as children to grow up on the planet and then conquer the planet, destroy it so that they can sell it to the highest bidder, basically. Now, Goku comes to Earth. He ends up hitting his head, so he forgets his Saiyan mission. So he winds up not being, you know, trying to conquer the planet, so he grows up good. So, pretty much the story of Dragon Ball Z is about Goku. And yes, I also like Dragon Ball and even Dragon Ball GT. And Dragon Ball Super, I give it thumbs up too. Uh, I love all of Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball, the franchise in general, is just great to me. Now, just to start off with Season 1, you got Goku's brother Raditz, who comes from outer space, to see why Goku hasn't destroyed all life on Earth yet. Goku's actual Saiyan name is Kakarot. His Earth name is Goku. So, a lot of Japanese uh, animes and stuff like that like to use like names of fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. Uh, for their characters' names, and I like the name Kakarot. I think it's very catchy. And so Raditz comes there uh, to Earth to uh, see what the fuck Goku's been doing. Why hasn't he conquered the planet? And Raditz is actually Goku's older brother. And Raditz is a character that the show I really never felt like they did enough with. He never comes back in the show, or at least he hasn't yet. He, I don't know about Dragon Ball Super. You never know what might happen in the future of that show, but he hasn't done anything yet other than pretty much this. He shows up to Earth, kidnaps Goku's son, wants to force Goku to join him because there's not many Saiyans left because their home planet was blew up. Um, and so uh, he kidnaps Goku's son, and Raditz is like the most powerful bad guy that Goku's ever faced. So Goku has to team up with his arch rival Piccolo, and Goku and Piccolo, even working together with their combined might, can like just barely handle Raditz and can't really even hurt him too bad. So, but Gohan though actually has hidden power. The character does. He unleashes his hidden power and actually blasts in the Raditz chest and actually hurts him worse than Goku or Piccolo have been able to do the entire fight. So one thing leads to another. Goku has to hold Raditz in place while Piccolo uses his special beam cannon, which is his most powerful attack. Now, Piccolo is actually a Namekian, and more on them later <laughs> in Season 3. But, um, or 2, I mean. But Piccolo uses his special beam cannon. It shoots an energy wave straight through Goku and Raditz, killing them both. Goku goes to the afterlife, goes to this uh, trail or, uh, or uh, bridge or whatever called Snake Way, and uh, a road, I guess. It's called Snake Way. And he goes there heading to a planet in the afterlife called King Kai's planet. And there, you know, is King Kai. And King Kai is going to teach Goku more powerful martial arts because there's two more, even more powerful Saiyans coming to Earth in the characters of, of uh, Vegeta and Nappa. Now, Nappa's like this big old buff dude, you know, who's really strong. And then Vegeta's like this tiny little dude who doesn't talk as much. And he's a lot smaller than Nappa. But he's actually much more powerful than Nappa as well. So one thing leads to another. All the fighters on Earth have to get together. All Goku's friends do. You got Krillin, Gohan, Piccolo, Tien, Chaozu, uh, Yamcha. They all have to get together to fight the Saiyans. You get a couple little filler episodes where they're like training and stuff. But those episodes, I even like those. I even like those. They don't bother me in this season at all. Filler episodes don't. Um, but uh. But yeah, and you, uh, they start training for the Saiyans, Vegeta and Nappa. Pretty much when Vegeta and Nappa get there, though, they dominate. Everybody. And it's just Nappa by himself. He dominates everybody. You're like, can this motherfucker be stopped? 
And of course, when Goku finally makes it back from the afterlife after being wished back, when he makes it back, because there's these magic, you know, Dragon Balls on the, hence the name Dragon Ball Z. There's these magic Dragon Balls on Earth that actually are connected to Piccolo, because uh, they're made by Namekians, which is Piccolo's, you know, home planet's, you know, his race on his home planet. And if Piccolo dies, the uh, Dragon Balls lose their power. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, they, the Saiyans, Vegeta, and Nappa want to use the Dragon Balls to make a wish for immortality. So not only do they have to, to uh, destroy the Saiyans so they won't destroy the Earth, but they have to stop them from using the Dragon Balls on top of that. So Nappa pretty much whoops everybody's ass. Finally taking out Piccolo as Piccolo, like, sacrifices himself to block a blast heading towards Gohan, and Piccolo dies from that blast. Goku finally shows back up, kicks Nappa's ass like, like that, so it shows you Goku is, like, got way more powerful. Goku and Vegeta have an epic fight, a great fight for the show, first, like, really huge epic fight for the show, um, Vegeta gives it everything he's got, Goku gives it everything he's got, but Vegeta keeps coming, uh, Goku even uses his most powerful attack, the spirit bomb, which is where he takes energy from, like, everything around him and throws it at him, he got taught that by King Kai, as well as the KO Ken technique, but Vegeta keeps coming, and Saiyans also have tails, and they look at a full moon, they actually transform into a giant monkey, it's kind of like a werewolf thing, so Gohan, Goku's son, transforms into a giant monkey and actually tries to take Vegeta out. But Vegeta manages to slice off his tail, and, Go and Gohan kind of just, like, falls on him and crushes him before he turns back to normal, and Vegeta's still alive. So Vegeta gets in his escape pod, gets the fuck out of Dodge, and starts heading back to recuperate and come back for revenge. So, uh, one thing leads to another, so they want to bring back their friends, so everybody wants to rest up and then head to planet Namek for season two. So they can uh, use the Namek Dragon Balls, which there's obviously more Dragon Balls on Namek, because that's where Piccolo's from, so there's more Namek's on, dra on, on the planet Namek, so they obviously got more Dragon Balls. That leads us into Season 2. Now Season 2, I really like as well. I really get a kick out of Season 2 with Goku on front. It's a lot of fun. As you can see here, you got the characters. You got Gohan, uh, Krillin, Goku, Vegeta, and then the Ginyu Force down here at the bottom. And then the biggest badass ever, Frieza, who's like the most popular bad guy of Dragon Ball Z, but I do get, I really do feel like they brought him back way too many fucking times. But yeah, uh, pretty much it's got Go, it's got it's Gohan, Krillin, and uh, Bulma, which ends up getting married to Vegeta later. She's like a friend of theirs from Dragon Ball, um, the, the first show, Dragon Ball, that leads into Dragon Ball Z. They go to Namek so they can use the Dragon Balls to bring back all their friends. Um, they head there, but Vegeta's also going there for those Dragon Balls. They get there. Goku's on his way there as well. He's he's flying in another spaceship. He's training at 100 times gravity, so he's gonna be an even more bad motherfucker when he gets dynamic. Each time a Saiyan like survives a life or death battle, they get like way more stronger in this show. So that's really cool. Um, so they're all heading there. Vegeta's like, and Frieza also is the person who's like in charge of the Saiyans, and he also destroyed the Saiyans' home world because he's actually scared of the Saiyans somewhat because they get more powerful after every battle, and he doesn't want any warrior to ever rise up to challenge his power. So uh, everybody's heading there to get the Dragon Balls, pretty much. And I like this because it gives other characters like Gohan and Krillin and Bulma like time to shine on Namek, and where you know they're racing to get the Dragon Balls and everything, trying to outsmart Vegeta and all that shit. And uh, one thing leads to another, and the Ginyu Force actually shows up. Frieza calls in reinforcements, the Ginyu Force. So Vegeta has to team up with Krillin and Gohan because he knows how tough these guys are. Uh, Vegeta kills this one member of the Ginyu Force who can freeze time and shit. Uh, he kills him by like, slicing his head off. Uh, and then another member, Raccoon, comes out who's really powerful, beats the shit out of all of them. Vegeta takes the longest to beat, though. Vegeta does a number on him, beats the hell out of him, actually, but it still doesn't stop him. And Raccoon ends up, you know, ends up overpowering Vegeta. And then finally, when Goku shows up, Goku demolishes Raccoon because he's been training at 100 times gravity, so he's much more powerful now. So he demolishes Raccoon uh, and takes out Jason. I mean, and takes out uh, Birder as well, who's another member of the uh, Ginyu Force. And then I love this while they're after they've been took out, Vegeta kills them both while they're laying down on the ground, defenseless. I love that. And then Jace, another member of the Ginyu Force, flies back to Captain Ginyu, the leader, this big purple dude with fucking horns sticking out of his head. And uh, Vegeta kills Jace because uh, Vegeta's much more powerful now after his fight with Raccoon. And then uh, Captain Ginyu gets in a fight with Goku, but Goku gets the upper hand, but Captain Ginyu has a special technique where he does a body change technique, which is really awesome, where he switches bodies with Goku, takes over his body, and then the, the heroes have to actually fight Goku for a while until they manage to, you know, switch him back into his regular body. Uh, 
so Goku's got his body back, and then the, the, the season pretty much ends with Goku being really weak after all the fighting and them having to put him in a recovery chamber. Meanwhile, while Frieza shows up there to kick some fucking ass. So we jump into, like, the, the final season, basically, that these two have been building to. Season 3, which is the entire Frieza saga. This is my favorite fight of Dragon Ball Z. Frieza right there in his final transformation. Uh, here on the back, you'll get the, the Namek Dragon right here, who's like really buff compared to the Earth Dragon. Then right underneath it, you get Vegeta fighting Frieza, then Gohan. And then right underneath that, you got uh, Goku getting ready to duke it out with Frieza's final stage. And right underneath that, you got Super Saiyan Goku. So pretty much, man, with this season, you get some cool shit. He, uh, Frieza, every time he gets in a fight with somebody, Piccolo gets wished back. He comes to Namek. Um, he fucking fuses with this other Namek. They combine, you know, powers. And Piccolo is able to fight Frieza's first stage. So, uh, or no, Vegeta's like equal with Frieza's first stage. Then then Frieza transforms to a more powerful stage, like a big old buff stage. When his first stage is like really little, he's like a big old Schwarzenegger Frieza looking stage with giant horns on his head. And Piccolo shows up there, kicks that stage's ass. So Frieza transforms again into another stage, which looks like an, one of the Xenomorphs from Alien, the movie Alien. And he's got like this big long head with like horns sticking out of it and a long face like a xenomorph. And that one dominates Piccolo. And so after that, Frieza transforms into his final transformation, which he has to duke it out with Goku, who's now much more powerful after getting out of the recovery chamber because he's a Saiyan. He gets more powerful after every battle. So Frieza's like this intergalactic tyrant. And Goku, even as powerful as he is, Frieza's just toying with him the entire fight. Goku uses his most powerful attack, the Spirit Bomb, which he's gathering energy from everyone on Namek, and hits Frieza with it. All it does is just like hurt one of Frieza's eyes. And then Frieza fucking lifts Krillin up in the air and blows him up. And if you watch Dragon Ball, Krillin is like one of Goku's best friends. So that causes Goku to transform into a Super Saiyan. Now, Super Saiyan is like an emotional transformation for a Saiyan. As well as a power upgrade, and when they and when a Saiyan is able to tap into this, you know, hidden power of the Super Saiyan strength, they transform into like a golden-haired, green-eyed version of themselves. And after Goku has got this huge power boost, Frieza is like nothing to him. Then he like demolishes Frieza. So Frieza goes up to a hundred percent max power at his final stage, and he's like really buff. And for a while, they're kind of evenly matched, but Frieza's power is draining much quicker, and Goku's power is pretty much just barely moving. So Goku is able to just keep demolishing Frieza. Uh, and finally, one thing leads to another, and the planet blows up. And you don't know whether or not Goku has got off the planet or not. But of course he, he does make it off in one of like the Ginyu Force's space pods or whatever. And everybody else gets like gets like wished back to Earth pretty much. <clears throat> or they use an ex everybody either I'm it's hard for me to remember, it's been a long time since I've seen this season. They either use an escape pod to get out or they get wished back to Earth. I I think they get wished back though, I'm pretty sure. But uh But yeah, but Goku decides to stay though instead of getting wished back so he can make sure Frieza's dead. But, uh, yeah, the only downside to this season, season three, is that when the Frieza fight is so epic that by the time they start getting down to the last couple episodes, they just keep dragging it out and dragging it out just to try to make it seem more and more epic. Any Dragon Ball Z fan will tell you the Frieza saga is drug out bad at the end. And then finally, when Goku unleashes one final blast at Frieza, he just disintegrates him or so you so you think. He actually does come back later, but he, he does get defeated here by Goku. That Frieza's ass has been stomped by Saiyan, which was his, like his greatest fear of all time. So great season, still even with the dragging towards the end, still a great season and a lot of fun. But he does even now more towards the good side because he helped the Z fighters, you know, fight the Ginyu Force. So all in all, great season. Highly recommend these three seasons. For I'll just go ahead and spoil it for the entire show. Four stars. I'll just go ahead and say it for these three seasons together. Four stars. Great. <clears throat> um, doesn't bother me at all that there's a little bit of filler. Well, well, maybe I should take that back. A little bit of filler does kind of bother me a little bit, but still, it's still enough. To, it, yeah, there's still enough cool shit in there for me to give it four stars. I'd still, I'd still give it, I'd still give it four stars. Still a, a great, great three seasons of the show. A great, epic fighting. A lot of fun. Fucking badass. Just great to watch. Um, I highly recommend this show to any anime fan. This is some hardcore cool shit. Uh, especially if you like action anime. And I will see you guys again with the next Dragon Ball Z review for seasons, well, 4, 5, and 6 probably. <laughs> so I'll see you guys uh, again with the next Dragon Ball Z review.